Let's turn to Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace. Chris, I just got word. A little birdie told me in my ear there, and this thing right here that you just booked Chris, that you just booked Bernie Sanders for the Sunday Show this weekend. That's true. In his first appearance on Fox News Sunday since he became a presidential candidate, we're delighted to have him. We hope Hillary Clinton will follow suit. So far, no luck with her, but we're, as I say, delighted to have Sanders. And watching that debate and watching the debate the week before, I got to say, Sanders is fascinating to watch. He's uh, very deft on the debate stage, and clearly he has thrown Hillary Clinton off her game. He attacks her uh, when she doesn't expect it. He doesn't attack her when she does, and he kind of hits her from all kinds of different angles depending on the situation. He's kind of like Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. It's interesting that he's running against Hillary Clinton, and so are the Republicans already. So everybody's after Hillary Clinton, and, and, that, and that helps him a lot. I wonder if how much harder he's going to go, and, and, and frankly, what your first question might be once you get past the pleasantries. Well. <laughs> we, we don't do much for pleasantries on Fox News Sunday. I, I don't know yet, but it, it is fascinating because I have to tell you, in mid-December, like a lot of people, uh, after she got through the Benghazi hearing and all of that, and Joe Biden said he wasn't going to run, uh, it appeared that this race was over and she was going to sail to the nomination. And now she's in the fight of her life, or at least the biggest fight in eight years since Barack Obama. Uh, he's got a lot of momentum. He raised about $7 million since... He scored that sweeping victory in New Hampshire. Now, the map, the, the, the primary map favors her a little more than him or a good deal more than him, exactly as you pointed out, because uh, a lot more minorities, 55% uh, in 2008, 55% of Democratic voters were African-American. Obviously, the Clintons' close ties to the African-American community. Sanders has to prove that he can break through with that group, but, but he's, a, he's impressive and smart. Uh, crafty, his aides call him, crafty. on the stump and on the, in the debate stage. It'll be really interesting to see what he has to say on Sunday. Well, he sat next to Al Sharpton. I saw it, so everything must change now. Well, she's also sitting next to Al Sharpton. It does say something about the country, doesn't it, that if you're going to appeal to the African-American community, you've got to go kiss the ring of the godfather, Al Sharpton. It's, it's, it's a curious development in America. I don't think it says a dang thing about the country. I think it says everything with, about the out-of-touch people who are running politics these days. Anybody who thinks the way you need to go out and appeal, appeal to African-American uh, millennials or anybody else, that you have to, the, the way to get there is by the, 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 the chair next to Al Sharpton. That's just, that's just dumb, dumb. That's dumb. That's stupid, isn't it? Because, I mean, I, I, I know that Barack Obama sat there eight years ago in same chair same restaurant and all that i get it it's supposed to appeal in a certain way but <laughs> i don't know it seems stupid doesn't it well i mean i'm asking you it does we, we it? report they decide no but you get we, I, I ask you a question though we don't deal with pleasantries here what do you think uh we, is we, that a helpful thing uh i think we're going to have a really interesting interview also with marco rubio because <laughs> as you point out he re really stepped in it in the last debate and of course he's going to have a debate tomorrow night and then we're going to talk to him on Sunday morning and see whether he's been able to right the ship. You know, I have to tell you, before that debate, there were a lot of people who thought he was going to finish a strong second and might even beat Trump in New Hampshire. And all of that uh, went into, you know, re sharp reverse after he, he sort of kept parroting those, those lines over and over again four times. Uh, he's got to do better in this debate. I think he knows he's got to do better. And the fact that he's coming out, he's already booked to talk to us on Sunday indicates... He thinks he's going to have something to say on Sunday morning after the debate. He's changed the way he rolls already because he's out there giving longer news conferences, talking to people for a longer time. Seems more like the, the guy that we might see when we're hanging out in the rotunda and he walks by and says something self-deprecating and laughs. Similar to Hillary Clinton, how she is in normal life where, you know, anybody who's ever known her says she's really engaging and shoulders back and interesting and compelling and yet... They, they stand up there so robotic, all of them, and, you know, robots trailing around Marco Rubio now. You wonder if that wouldn't be an easy thing if you're a human being of substance. Yeah, I mean, to, 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 if you, to, to just, keep repeating you know, yourself. I will you. tell you, though, no, it's, I think it's hard, though, when, you're, when you have to give the same speech over and over and over again, and you know that any little slip you make, this is, this is tough stuff, being in these primaries. Uh, I remember sitting uh, one time, I'm not name dropping, but I was at a lunch and a lot of the anchors before the State of the Union with George W. Bush in like 2005 or something, and he said 
Being in the primary fight in 2000 was the toughest thing he ever did because you fight your guts out in Iowa, and then he got, got on a plane and started all over again in New Hampshire. He got his head handed to him in New Hampshire. Then he went down to South Carolina. He said it's the toughest thing he's ever done. Uh, and, and in its own strange kind of survivor or Hunger Games way, I guess it gives us a little bit of insight into who would make a good president and who wouldn't. I guess it does. And I can't wait to this Sunday watch you interview the two big candidates there. The Florida Republican Marco Rubio will be there. The Vermont Independent Senator, well, he's running as a Democrat, Bernie Sanders. That's this Sunday on Fox News Sunday on your local Fox station.